Welcome to Introduction to Structures. This is Lesson 1, First Concepts. In this presentation, I wanted to share with you all uh, some uh, important definitions and some important concepts in the structural analysis at the first level. So this is for basic structures. So the content of this presentation will include the introduction to simple supported beams and cantilever beams. We are going to define what is degrees of freedom in the two-dimensional space. We are going to define the sign conventions we usually use when we deal with these structures. I'm going to define what is a roller support, what is a pin support, and how these two supports constitute what we know as a simple supported beam. We are going to study how the fixed support uh, works in a cantilever beam. We are going to introduce the concept of equilibrium and we're going to study the reaction for simple supported beams and uh, cantilever beams as well. So in the first place, I wanted to introduce to you all these two guys. The first one is called simple supported beam. As you see, it's a beam. This uh, yellow uh, rectangle represents <coughs> the beam itself that has applied this pin support to the left and this roller to the right extreme and is subjected to several types of loads as this punctual inclined load in here, this Q, which is a uniform distributed load or UDL. This is a moment applied to this point and the span of this simple supported beam is L1. We have as well the cantilever beam, which is a beam that instead of having a pin support and a roller have a fixed support in an extreme and is subjected as well to an inclined load F a UDL W and the Spanish L2. So this defined part of the geometrical properties of this beam, the span. But in order to do the analysis, the complete analysis of a beam, we need to define as well the shape of the cross section of the beam and we need to study certain properties of this cross section. For example, in the screen, you can see three examples in here of different cross sections for beams. This is a T section, this is an I section, and this is a hollow rectangular section. Any of these uh, typologies of beam can be a simple supported beam or a cantilever beam. So when we talk about the cross section properties, we are talking about the area of the cross section, the location of the centroid, the moment of area, the moment of inertia, the elastic section modulus, the radius of, the radius of duration, and, and many others. But these are the main properties we need to define when we are analyzing simple structures. So the first uh, things I wanted to, to, to share with you is uh, how these schemes, these theoretical schemes, are applied in reality. For example, in this picture we have a building where we can uh, identify very clearly that there are these secondaries being in here that are part of the roof structure of the building. We have these main beams that are called del delta beams because the shape of the, of, the, of the beam. And as you see, there is a path load that makes that the load on the roof will discharge on the secondary beams. The secondary beam will discharge on the delta beam. The delta beams will discharge on the columns and the columns to the foundations. So we can identify very clearly here the columns the delta beams, the secondary beam, these lateral beams in here that are apparently rectangular. And this is uh, easy to see as well that this is a prefabricated structure. So if we want to analyze this delta beam in here, for example, we can use what we have introduced uh, a minute ago, which is the simple supported beam. So we are going to replace the delta beam in reality by this scheme where you have this rectangle in here, you have applied a pin support to the left, a roller to the right, and you uh, model the discharge of the secondary beams on the delta beam with these loads applied in here, and you can run some analysis to determine, for example, reactions, bending moments, shear forces, internal um, stresses in the cross section, etc., and etc. But just to start, I wanted to, to show you that this scheme, this simplified scheme, can be applied to real structures. The same thing happened with the cantilever beam. In a building like uh, you can see in the picture, 
you have identified columns, you have beams, you have slabs, and you have uh, other uh, structural elements. So if you want to study this cantilever beam in here, you can use the scheme I already presented in the previous slides. So a, fix, a cantilever beam is a fixed beam on an extreme and is subjected to certain loads and have an span L as any other beam. The first and probably the most important concept in the analysis of a structure is the concept of degrees of freedom. We are going to study, or we are going to, to, to work in the two-dimensional space in these examples. So the two-dimensional space is the space of your screen. So you can move an object through this uh, two-dimensional space in every direction. So you can produce a displacement in the horizontal direction, the vertical direction, or uh, um, apply rotations to the body. So let's see what happened in the two-dimensional space with this beam, which is a black beam at the moment. And we have located this G, which represents the centroid of this um, beam in two dimensions, just to have as a reference a common point for all the cases. So we have located this point here. So we are at the time T0 that represents an initial time. And we want to, to study what happened or how happened a displacement, a general displacement in this two dimensional space to a new position at the time time one, where we have located the new position of the beam and we have located the centroid as well as in the previous case. So in order to produce a movement in the two-dimensional space, you need to apply forces. This is the first concept you need to, to understand. So if we apply a horizontal force to this black beam here, we are going to produce a horizontal displacement, horizontal forces, horizontal displacements. So the horizontal displacement is UZ, and is as is shown in the in the screen. If now we apply a vertical force FB, we are going to produce certain displacement in the vertical direction. We are going to call UY. And you see, we reach the position of the centroid, that the position that we wanted. But now we have to apply a moment in order to produce a rotation and to achieve the new position at the time T1 as we uh, wanted to show the possibilities of displacements and rotation of this beam. So this exercise is useful to understand that in, for every beam in the two-dimensional space, there are two possibilities in terms of displacement. So you can have a vertical displacement UY and a horizontal displacement UZ, and plus a rotation around the point. This rotation is an angle alpha, so in total, a beam has three degrees of freedom in the two-dimensional space. And this is important to understand. There are only three degrees of freedom and only three. There is no more, there is more or less, is exactly three. Two displacements and one rotation. So to pass from one position to another on the two-dimensional space, we always need to apply these three components, the displacement in the horizontal direction, the displacement in the vertical direction, and the rotation around a point. It is important to understand as well the relation between the forces and the displacements. Horizontal forces produce horizontal displacement, vertical forces produce vertical displacement, and moment produce rotations. At this stage, it is very important to define design conventions uh, to avoid ambiguities and to to be able to write proper mathematical equations in the future. So we are going to define at this stage two conventions, the convention about forces and moments and the convention about displacement and rotations. In both cases, a force or a displacement that is horizontal and goes to the right will be positive. So any force or displacement going to the left will be negative. Any force or displacement that is going up is going to be positive. Any force or displacement that is coming down will be negative. And any moment or rotation will be positive if it's close-wise. On the contrary, if the rotation or the moment is anti-close-wise, this moment or this rotation will be negative. This is the time when we need to start studying 
the way that supports on a beam works. The first support we're going to study is the roller. A roller is a particular support that restricts the displacement in the vertical direction, but allow the displacement in the horizontal direction when it's applied to a beam or any other object. The other thing that have as a, as a property this roller is that this roller allows rotation around this hinge in here. So let's see first how this works in terms of displacement. If I apply an horizontal load on this beam that is connected to this roller, I will produce without any problem, without any resistance, this displacement because this displacement is allowed. The displacement in the vertical direction is not allowed because this is the way this roller works. So if I apply a vertical load in here, I won't be able to move this point in the vertical direction. The other thing we mentioned about, we mentioned it about the roller already, is that the roller allows rotation around this hinge. Then, for example, if I apply a vertical load on this beam that is connected to this roller, I'm going to produce a rotation around this hinge without any resistance because this rotation is allowed. In the same way, if I apply a vertical positive load, I will produce a rotation in the closed y direction because this rotation is allowed. So basically, a roller restricts only one degree of freedom, the vertical displacement in this case, and allow the horizontal displacement and the rotation around the hinge that is part of the roller. So just repeating this important concept, a roller restricts only one degree of freedom. The next support we are going to study is what we call a pin support. A pin support is a support that is fixed at the base and allow rotation around the hinge. So this support is more powerful than the roller because this um, support does not allow displacement in the horizontal direction or vertical direction, only allow rotations around this hinge in here. So this uh, particular support, this pin support, restricts two degrees of freedom. Just repeating, the roller restricts one degree of freedom, the pin support restricts two degrees of freedom. So if I apply to this, pin, uh, to this pin a vertical negative load, I will produce a rotation around this hinge because this rotation is allowed. Okay? This is the way this pin support works. Now, if we combine the effect of the pin support and the roller on a pin, uh, we see that at this point of the beam, we are going to have restricted the horizontal and the vertical displacement, but allow the rotations. If we apply to the right side of the right stream of the beam, the roller, we are going to fix this uh, point in the vertical direction as well. So in this case, if we analyze what happened with the application of different forces, let's say we apply an horizontal force on the beam, we see that the restriction that the pin support introduced will prevent the displacement of the beam in the horizontal direction. If we apply a vertical force on this beam, both the pin support and the roller will prevent the displacement in the vertical direction. And after, if we apply a moment to produce a rotation on the beam, this is prevented as well because, just for example, if we try to imagine the rotation around this point in here, we'll see that the restriction of the roller will prevent the rotations. If we try to analyze the rotation around this point in here, produced by this moment M and the other forces, we'll see that the restriction in this direction, in the vertical direction introduced by the pin support, um, will prevent the rotation as well. So in some way we can say, we can understand now that the combination of this pin support and this roller fix the beam in the two-dimensional space, producing what we call an isostatic structure. In this case, the number of, of degrees of freedom of the beam, which is equal to 3, is equal to the number of restrictions introduced by the supports. So the simply supported beam is an isostatic beam. In the case of the cantilever beam, what we have applied in an extreme is a fixed support. 
a fixed support is the most powerful support we can introduce in this uh, simple analysis of the structures because the fixed support restricts the <coughs> displacement in the horizontal direction, the displacement in the vertical direction, and the rotation at the point where we have applied the fixed support. So the horizontal displacement, the vertical displacement, and the restriction are not allowed when you apply a fixed support. So you have a, a full restriction at the point only with one support. The number of degrees of freedom equal to three is equal to the number of restriction equal to three as well, introduced by this fixed support, then the cantilever beam is an isostatic beam. As a resume of all these concepts, important concepts, um, there are questions that can be answered very easily. Now we understand how this um, elements works. So if someone asks how many degrees of freedom have there been in the two-dimensional space, without any doubt, we know that there are three degrees of freedom, two displacement in the horizontal and vertical direction, and one rotation. To answer the question how many degrees of freedom are restricted by a roller, the answer is only one. The roller restricts the displacement in the vertical direction. To the question how many degrees of freedom are restricted by a pin support, the answer is two because the, the pin support restricts the displacement in the horizontal and vertical direction, vertical and horizontal. To the question how many degrees of freedom are restricted by a fixed support, the fixed support restricts three degrees of freedom. Uh, I remind you that there is a convention for displacements, rotations, and for forces and moments that we are going to follow in these uh, presentations. And we go to the next concept. So once we have defined what is a simple supportive beam, which is a beam that is subjected to external loads, like forces, UDLs, moments, etc., following this convention we have defined, the effects of the support, the pin support and the roller, are reactions. So the effect of the pin support is the introduction of two reactions, one reaction in the horizontal direction and one reaction in the vertical direction, and the effect of the roller is this um, reaction in the vertical direction. In this way, we, have, we define another concept in here, an isostatic beam as the simple supported beam, have external loads and have reactions. One of the other problems we have as engineers when we analyze these structures is the determination of the value of these reactions in red. In order to establish the values of this reaction, having as a data the external loads and the geometry of the beam is uh, by mean the use of the equations of equilibrium. The equation of equilibrium are three in the two-dimensional space. The summation of forces in the horizontal direction has to be equal to zero. The summation of forces in the vertical direction has to be equal to zero as well. And the summation of moments at any point of the structure need to be equal to zero to fulfill the equilibrium. And a structure in equilibrium uh, is an structure that we look for when we design structures. In the same way, when we study a cantilever beam, the fixed support will introduce reactions, but the fixed support will introduce an horizontal reaction, a vertical reaction, and additionally, a reaction as a moment, because this particular support restricts as well the rotations around a point. And this is the reason why these have this configuration in terms of reactions. Again, in order to establish the value of these reactions, the horizontal, the vertical, and the moment, we're going to use the equations of equilibrium, which are the summation of forces in the horizontal direction is equal to zero, the summation of forces in the vertical direction is equal to zero, and the summation of moments around a point is equal to zero as well. Thank you very much.